Hello guys, welcome back to another exciting episode of our unit testing with NUnit series. In this episode, we will dive deep into a crucial aspect of unit testing, naming convention. We will answer some questions. Why names matter? Good names are like signs in a city. They help you find your way. In unit testing, they make your test easier to understand and manage. What's the benefit of good name? Using good names has many advantages. It makes your test easier to read, helps with troubleshooting, and encourages teamwork in your development group. And what a good test name should look like. Let's break down what makes a test name good. A good name should be clear, short, and follow a pattern. We will discuss name rules like using should or when in your test name and how to create your test method. In a live show, we will create well-named test and show how to use the rules we talked about. Before we jump into the process, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our upcoming tutorials on unit testing, c -sharp programming, and software development. So let's start. The first step to start with unit testing is create a test project. The only thing that we need to name a test project is just a test at the end of the test project. If you remember the previous episodes, we just create a test project and we add test at the name of the project name. Let's have a look at that. Here we have a project name, clean template that persistent. And for creating a unit test project for it, we just add test. But basically, it's better to add tests because usually we have more than unit tests here. So the only thing that we need is just add test at the end of the project, which is under test. So, the next step will be naming test classes. It's completely same as naming test project. We need to just add test at the end of class name. For example, here we created a test class for email validator. We need to just add tests at the end of class name. Here class name is email validator and it should be email validator tests. There you are. So, The next part is naming test method or test function. There are several ways of naming test method. I will mark some of the famous way. So let's start with the first one. In the first way, we add should and then name of the unit under test. For example, we have a sum method and we need to test the unit like adding two numbers. We can name it in this way, should, and then name out the unit that's under test. So the second way is the name of the method. Here the name of method is sum, and then underscore, then should, and then the name of the unit which is under test. 
so the third way the unit under test comes first then underscore then the scenario for example uh, here it should be sum underscore if entry is not null then the expected outcome then the result of the sum method comes here and then number four and the last one this format may seem a bit long but it packs a lot of information that can be super helpful uh, should return is a clear indicator that uh, this is the test method it specifies what the test should return which is important for understanding the expected outcome uh, the next part when scenario describes the context or scenario you are testing it tells you what conditions or circumstances trigger this particular test uh, so here also we have an example uh, should underscore retain valid product then when calculating total price by following this naming convention you make it easier for yourself and your team to understand the purpose of each test even months or years down the road so to sum it up using this format ensure that your test methods are self-explanatory and maintainable leading to smoother collaboration and more robust code here i conclude this demonstration to keep the video concise uh, in the next video we will discuss an important topic in unit testing until then happy coding